Welcome to another episode of a News You Can Use podcast. My name is French Air Gardner. I am your creator and host. Uh, this podcast is powered by my brand, B and Us LLC. Go make sure you go and, and shop my brands and products on B E A N D U S L L C dot com. Is this is our first episode of the new year 2020. So whoop whoop to that. Pretty excited. Um, thank you for um playing the podcast and downloading the podcast, and thank you for rating it. Thank you for all of our international listeners and domestic listeners. I'm very grateful for you. And um, this is a great time. Uh, on January 23rd, 2020, we'll be celebrating our first year um, in recording. So I'm super excited uh, for this um, this time and this year. It's been a blessing creating the last 40 episodes and grateful for all of you who have tuned in. Um, the ways that you can get engaged is download the Anchor app. And you can uh, leave messages that I will play on the next episode. And also, um, and that's free to download. Also, you can be a supporter of the podcast by um, supporting um, every month through the Anchor app. Um, and if you da- if you, you support with nine ninety nine or more, I do get more percentage of your donation. So that's quite great. And also, you can just support the podcast um, directly by cash apping me, uh, dollar sign B E A N D U S L L C um, L L C, uh, and also PayPal dot me slash French Air F R E N C H A I R E. St. Louis dropping, popping, popping, popping. Black, black bodies on the line. Let the creator elevate your mind. New hits like this, like this. But three, you're out, no mistake. That's the way the bitch break. My old man. Sleeping in his the dreams. Redemption song by the V. Sometimes Nelson. grumbling and complaining, but always keeping on. A garden of fragrant flowers. Then you, woman child. Last poet, you know it. Flowering you know garden it. of my heart. And my heart opened to you. Pick it up you at your local neighborhood store. So with no further ado, I'm super excited. I have a guest on the line to uh, talk to you guys today. I'm pretty excited to talk with her. Uh, we met on Facebook through the Women Helping Women um, Entrepreneur Facebook group. And I've been connecting with several um, women on that um, on, on that platform. And I'm really grateful um, to be able to share this platform with another fellow podcaster. And her story really resonated with me. She's actually our first business spotlight who is non-melanated. I did feel like that even though um, she's not black or African-American or African, that her story still resonate and as in in the human experience so i want to introduce uh mrs amber leanne drake to the line hello you guys oh my gosh i feel so special to be here thank you for having me in this space um i feel very honored to be a part of this podcast um and just like you kind of said, I, I'm pretty much as white as they come. Uh, and though I still have a soul and I'm living a human experience. And so when when we connected, I felt so just drawn to what it is that you're you're stepping up to share. And, and we felt really connected in the fact that we were both just in this space of desiring to elevate those who are in our who are in our energy and who are in our space, um, and we have our we obviously have our separate. Like you have your following, and, and I have mine. But we're both in this space of creating elevation from where we are, and kind of putting our own dent in the world from like where we are. And so I just I love what you're up to, and I'm so I'm just so excited to be here. Likewise. 
So just some details um, about Amber. Her name is Amber Leanne Drake. She is a wifey, friend, and holistic life coach. She has spent the last six months completely unearthing, reshaping, and recreating herself. This is the next level, and she cannot believe it is finally here. She helps women ditch burnout and chaos to reclaim their confidence and clarity with consistent, aligned action. She is kind of obsessed with succulents, being warm, and audiobooks. And you can find her roaming around on the interwebs. I like how you put that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, on Instagram at www.instagram.com, Amber Leanne Drake. And her Facebook group is www.facebook.com slash group slash Sojourner Sisterhood. And she also, like I said, has a podcast called the Sojourner Podcast. And I will put those links in the show notes. Now, Amber, tell us, um, give us some more background about who you are, where you're from, where you live in, and, and just what you've been up to and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, so I like I like my bio says that like over the last six months, I really have been recreating myself uh, very intentionally. And so it has taken me a while to get to the space to be in the space to recreate myself. And yes. if you've ever, like, if you've ever been on this journey, um, if you're new to the journey, know that the journey never ends. True. Um, and, and so in the last six months, so I've dug in my heels uh, in a, in this new space, this fresh um, space for myself that I'm like, I, like, I, I burned the boat. Like, I was like, there's no going back from this space. Okay. Uh, I'm taking it all the way or, or I'm going to die trying basically. And, and I, I wasn't there yet. Um, I, I originally, I started this journey. Um, I was very sick. I struggled with uh, anxiety and depression and insomnia and yeast issues and PMS issues. Like I had all of the issues and I was 23. I was living in, um, a space from where I like basically was, I called myself couch girl looking back. I, I mm. lived, in just, you know, it's like I lived in my couch and then I just wanted to go back to bed, but I wasn't sleeping at night. And so it was, I was like, I'm 23 and something's not right. And I finally was like, okay, I have to, like something has to give. And so I started working on my body. I found, I found gut health and I'm a huge proponent of gut health and healing our guts and, and the magic that it has, um, in our bodies. But I found that and I started like taking these strides in my body and so, as I began that body journey, I realized that my body was just the outward expression of all of the junk that was wrong inside, in, in my soul and in my mindset. And I've seen that show up. I see it show up a lot in women where we have this body dysmorphia issue or we ha we're having uh, disordered eating or we're sick or we're, you know, we're becoming ill. Um, and not just women, men do this too, but the women that I work with, we're becoming ill because we're ignoring the red flags that our soul has been sending up for probably years. Yes. And it's, it's manifesting in our body in sickness and in uh, disordered eating and struggles with food and, and it wasn't until recently that I, I kind of unlocked this soul part of my journey. It was like I moved from body and then into mindset, mindset, um, neurolinguistic programming and learning like all of the mindset stuff into this soul aspect and this self-love part of my journey that has really turned things, just turned things around for me. Um, yes. I had an amazing life. I have had an amazing life. And so I'm now really living the life that I was craving because I fell in love with who I am. Yes. And it took moving through the body junk and the mindset junk and the clearing out to get to the point where I could burn the boat and say, that's it. I'm going all in or it's not worth it. I understand that. So where are yeah, you, where are you so from? Where are you from? Where you live? What do you do? So right now, I yeah. So right now, I'm in Oklahoma City. Um, my husband and I are 
planning on traveling pretty extensively here in the next couple of years. So mm-hmm. uh, we're, yeah, we're settling into here as home, as our home base. Uh, we did not picture ourselves here in Oklahoma City. Okay. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we were, we met and we lived in California. I grew up in California. Okay. We, uh, were, yeah, we were married, lived in Santa Barbara, and we both lost our jobs in the same week. What? And if that, if that is not a universal get the heck out, I don't know what is because our rent was way too expensive. Um, it was ridiculous. And so we lived in Santa Barbara with like zero income for and because I had saved my butt off before we got married. That's all gone now. Um, we we mm. lived there for like three months without any income. Um, and it finally was like, uh, okay, we either need to like find ourselves a cardboard box or like we need to like under the pass or we need to like find another place. Like, we can't live here anymore at okay. like $2,300 a month yeah. on zero income. Like we were like yeah. our rent, the, the rent there was just absolutely astronomical. And so we moved, we moved across country. We had family out here and we just kind of planned on, um, getting our feet underneath us here. Yes. And then we fell in love with the city. Um, the city is just really cool. And if you've ever been to Oklahoma City uh, in the past and it wasn't really cool, come back because the food scene in here is insane. The just like the, the collaboration that's happening in the city is really, really, really unique. Uh, it's revitalizing a lot. And so we just, we're kind of in a really great area um, and we love it here. So we're suddenly in here and, um, I work all online, so I work from my office in Oklahoma City. Nice. Yeah. I I, lo- I I enjoy working from home. I, I'm not as productive. Um, I readily admit, but uh, I I, do, I definitely enjoy being home working. <laughs> it seriously takes. It is a learning curve to be able to work from home. It is. So people think I know because my husband worked from home, but okay. I did for the longest time. And I was like, "Man, you need to like, roll out of bed, get to work. You need to, you know, pad down the hallway to your office, and <laughs> you can have a snack whenever you want. That's you can right. Take the afternoon off, go get the car, like take care, like whatever. And then I started working from home, and I was like, "Oh, it is not as easy as it looks. It, it is a mindset." To be able to sit down, drop everything else that's going on in your home, especially as women. Yes. Like, I've got laundry to turn over, and I've got things, and I've got projects, but when we're able to, like, set that down and, like, get work done, it's, yeah, it's a mindset battle. I agree. I agree with that. I'm actually one of, I'm your neighbor, because I, I live in Dallas, Texas, so I'm not too far from you. Dallas for like an event, but we haven't really ever hung out down there. But it's a cool city, right? Like there's it some is. stuff going on in Dallas. It's a lot going on in Dallas. I just moved back here. I, I'm uh, this is my I'm native. I'm a native, and but I just moved back here from St. Louis, Missouri, for the last eight years, and and it's 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 some a lot of adjusting. I've been doing a lot of driving around, and and um, it's 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 gotten it's grew up. Yeah, I grew, yeah, I got bigger. Um, that's what everyone says with, now that we live here in Oklahoma City. They're like, wow, you came at such a good time because Oklahoma City was not cool like five years ago. <laughs> it was not the place to be five years ago. And I'm like, you know, yeah, we kind of did. Like, it, it really did work out for us to be here. And um, we're walking distance from a couple of really cool, like, little boroughs here. Um, we've got, the, like, the little districts uh, in Oklahoma City. I know, I think in San Diego they call them boroughs or whatever, the 23rd and uh, but we've got some cool areas here to walk that we're in walking distance to. And so nice. We're here right now, uh, but we want to see the world. And so, um, in all honesty, the way I started in the online space as an entrepreneur um, is because I wanted to be able to work from wherever I wanted to. Yes. And I don't like pants. <laughs> that's honest I can like just like go like sit behind my desk and do my work 
I might be wearing underwear, but like it's like I, I have the freedom to live on my terms. Yes. And even though I have always been a fantastic employee, I don't like working for other people. Neither do I. I I just don't. I feel restricted, and I feel I start to feel resentful. Um, and it's not anything against them. It's just I don't really enjoy it. And so I was like, I have to get out of this. Just not liking what I'm doing, not liking the life that I'm living. Yes, and that's really how I started. And so I failed a lot. I <laughs> have been. In the quote-unquote entrepreneur space, I started actually with an MLM. Okay. Um, I pivoted into, I'm, I'm a registered, uh, I'm a certified gut, uh, gut health, I'm a certified health coach. Um, I, yeah, I focus primarily on gut health, but I, I've tried and done a lot of things, and it wasn't until I decided about six months ago that it there has to be more than just this desire to be free for myself. Okay. Because it was, I enjoyed helping people and I love helping people. I've always been a helper. Um, and so I just thought that that kind of came naturally, but that wasn't always necessarily my intention. Like it wasn't the undercurrent. It wasn't the energy in which I was doing things. Okay. The energy in which I was doing things was like, I need to get the hell out. Like I need to be able to stop working for other people. I need to be, I, I can't, I can't live this life anymore. And it was like this, um, anxious, desiring to be in the future of where I am living the life that I desire. Yes. So I was never present with, yeah, I was never present with me. I was never present with who I was at that time. And so I was never on my journey. I was always trying to be on someone else's journey. That's so honest. Yeah, and I, I, I wasn't seeing any success. I wasn't seeing the success that I desired because I wasn't being present with who I actually was at the time. There's a disconnect. There's an energetic, like, disconnect. And anyone who came across me in the online space or who met me in person, they can sense that. Even if they can't put their finger on it, they can sense that there's a disconnect within myself. They're like, ah, you're confusing. Your energy is confusing. Mm. Yeah. And That's so deep. it wasn't, yeah, um, when we are living our lives, from a space of energetic disconnect, which most of us are, unless you are like awakened to it, yes. we are. We're living it's like we have this undercurrent of um, anxiety and like frustration, or of like guilt and shame, and we're living somewhere in the past and the and the and the future, and we're not present to who we are and where we are right now, um, and we're not in what it is that we're doing. Amber, I literally had this conversation with somebody yesterday. Yes, I love it. Just alignment. So much alignment. My business coach has to call me on this. She calls me on this pretty regularly. She's like, be in energy of what you're doing right now. I should. My husband says, yeah, my husband says that you need to know what you're doing right now and what you need to do, what you need to do next. That's real. Like, right now. Right now, I'm on, I'm on this interview, and then next, I'm going to make lunch, or whatever it is. It's like, I don't need to be in the energy of, like, if I could just get out of my 9-to-5 job, then I could live this life that I'm craving. Be in your 9-to-5 job now. Yes, create what it is that you're desiring, but create it from a space of, I am here to elevate myself and then dust those around me. Yes. And not this desperate, needy, anxious energy because anyone and everyone can pick up on that. I agree with that. Yeah. And so um, now I'm in this online space and it feels like home. Uh, if you'd asked me six months ago if I liked social media, I would be like, no, I would be the first person who is not on social media. I would be the first person who would be like, I would swear off social media 100% <laughs> and just be done with it. Because I wasn't comfortable. I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. I wasn't comfortable in what I was um, preaching almost. I wasn't comfortable in, like, selling myself. I, I, like, I just was completely uncomfortable. And it wasn't until I got really clear on what it is that I do and how I elevate others 
And I started to lead myself powerfully in that, like being in the energy of leading myself so that I can lead others powerfully. Yes. I, I was I was so uncomfortable. Like there was, I, I was uncomfortable because I was in that energetic disconnect. And now I'm not, and I'm seeing that success that I was desiring all along because I got present to what was happening right now. That's the realest shit ever. It's real, and it sounds so easy. But it ain't. Like if we were just, right, it's not. And I get that. It, but it's like, if we were just present, if we were just where we are now, then everything would, like, align itself, and that's not it. Um, I know there's this quote that it's like, one, one decision can change everything. Or you're, like, one choice away from changing your life or something like that. Yes. And so, how many little decisions were you away from getting to that decision? Hmm. I don't just wake up one day and I'm like, I'm going to change the whole world. And I made that decision and all of a sudden everything changes. Right. I woke up one day with an idea. That idea made me make a choice and I joined an MLM and then I decided that that maybe wasn't the best fit for me. And so I, I changed how I was approaching that and then I changed like, and I, I kept making little decisions along the way until I was able to get to the decision to burn the boats and say, no, I'm going all in and I am rolling the dice on me because I am the only person that I have trust gambling on. Yes. That's what that is. Um, Amber, so I've been, I listen, I've listened to the first 14 episodes of your podcast. And like I told you on Messenger, it, the everything that you or most things that you and your guests were saying resonated with me so strongly. I just took the whole day one day and just listened to all those episodes. And I was so grateful that that we met um, on the Internet because I needed to hear that because sometimes, you know, things, but you just need a little bit conf- confirmation and just a little bit more more encouragement and inspiration and, and um you guys gave that to me and so i'm very for that i'm very grateful oh i love to hear that i love love to hear that and i when i launched the podcast i was very anxious i was very nervous i was like i was excited and though i was like who's gonna hear like who's gonna hear this is it gonna change like I-, I wanted it to be an access for people to to feel encouraged and inspired but also motivated to make those little choices that they need to make to get to that one big decision, mm-hmm. uh, whatever that looks like for them. And I was like, I don't know what this is going to look and feel like. I just don't know. And after I put it out, I started hearing that women were really feeling something when they tap into the podcast. And so that makes me so excited and so grateful. I'm so thankful that women are hearing it and, and they're, they're connecting deeper with themselves, even if it's just, uh, like you said, like something that you already kind of know. Uh, and so when you hear it in a different way or you shed a different kind of uh, like direction on it, mm-hmm. it can, it unlocks things. Uh, it does. Because we're always, yeah, we're always seeing with new eyes and we're hearing with new ears and, it, it can change everything to hear something that maybe you've even heard a hundred times before said in a different way. I agree. Yeah, I agree so with that. I love, I, I, I can sit and chat for forever and I can sit and hang out with my microphone and talk for a long time. Me and too. so I really, <laughs> I love, I love having guests because I will talk about something with them that I would have never gotten to before by myself. Yes. And yes. so that the the feeling of collaboration is just I'm I'm so here for it. I am here for it. Me too. Me too. Um so speaking of your podcast, in your first episode, you really give background to who you were and, and what your struggles were. And I just wanna shed some light on that and, and really just get back get to to share with my audience um, you know, how you made that the transformation really because basically you, you spoke to the fact that you had um, really bad eating disorder, eating disorders, anxiety and depression, like you just said earlier. And but my, my main question, though, is how did you figure out that? OK, yes, it is. You are having physical issues. But how did you figure out that there was a deeper 
issue beyond your body. It was more so that you needed to tap into your soul and and figure those those um those metaphysical things out for yourself. Yeah, actually, the trigger for that was uh, my husband. He he had expressed to me his um, just love of personal development before okay. we even got married, and I was just like. Uh, I grew up, I mean, I grew up um, non-denominational Christian, and, like, if it's not in the Bible, like, if it's not the Bible, it's not right, like, kind of thought processes. Yes. And so I'm like, ah, gosh, I don't know, I, I'm not comfortable with any of this um, woo, weird stuff that you're talking about, like, um, and he wasn't as woo as I've gotten, but he was more like Tony Robbins and, and, and people like that yes. who are talking about the power of our minds. Yes. And and I was like, that's crazy. Like, that's, that's crazy. Our thoughts are what they are. Like, I just, I had no grasp on the fact that I had any power over what was going on in my brain. Okay. I, I really had no idea. And so he had shared that with me before I was really, really sick. When I, when I really hit my rock bottom with my body, um, I had already been on this disordered eating journey, uh, so to speak. And I had kind of gone from very, very tiny, um, sick to just eating whatever I wanted because it obviously didn't matter because it didn't change how I felt. Sure. So I was... I was ruining my, my metabolism. I was destroying my, like, abuse system. And I still didn't like myself, mm-hmm. even at my smallest. And so I was like, what is the point of all of this? So I just didn't care. So I was just eating whatever. Um, and that fell back on me. I, mean, I gained a bunch of weight. And then I was getting really, I was sick. I was sick with being uh, anxious and depressed. And, like, all of that I know came down to... Um, just some gut health stuff. And so I know that those things show themselves in perfect divine timing for a reason. Right. Because it was from that rock bottom that I was willing to do and try anything. Okay. But like, I, at some point, like, I hate my life. I hate when, how I wake up. I'm newly married. I should be happy. Of course. And we're not happy. <laughs> we're definitely not happy. Um, I am anxious and sad and depressed and angry and my husband is great, but like, I don't enjoy being with him because I don't enjoy being with myself. Mm. And so, and so it was just this point of like, I'm literally willing to do anything to be, i like to have just, um, any glimmer of hope in my life because I just was at like, mentally, physically rock bottom. And so I found gut health. I found some of my, I got some of my, gained some of my health back. I lost some weight. I, I started exercising regularly and eating clean. And so it kind of opened me up to this idea that things could change. Okay. And then I, I kind of like tapped back into that personal development thing. I was like, okay, like you've got these books. I might as well like read them and see what this is about. Um, I also watch, uh, I'm not your guru, uh, Tony Robbins, like Netflix, he has a like documentary on there. Okay. And I remember, I remember being moved to tears a couple of times. I was like, I don't understand what he's doing, but I know that I need to be able to, I, I, I know that I'm willing to at least check it out. And so I started watching YouTube videos and, I, I mean, reading stuff, I I did one of Tony Robbins, like, old, old programs. Uh, my husband had it from a long time ago. Unleash your inner power, unlock your power. It's old. It's, like, from, like, the 80s, and it's just kind of, like, dated. But he walked through so many powerful mindset exercises. Okay. And I... I saw a difference in myself. And I was like, okay, I have the power to change something. And I kind of grasped that. Yes. And it wasn't, though, until recently 
when I, I keep saying I burned the boat and it was this decision that it was like, if I believe, if I believe that I can change something, what's holding me back from believing that I can change everything? Mm. That's powerful. What is it? Because there's obviously something, there's some BS, there's some block in the way of you believing that if you can change some things about your life, what is stopping you from changing everything? Right, I agree. And I had to sit down, I had to get really real with myself, and I, it came down to fear. I don't know what it's going to look like when I'm successful. Yes. I don't know what it's going to look like when I have all these clients or like, I don't have as much time for my husband. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what my parents are going to think. I don't know. Like, and fear of the unknown is single-handedly one of the things that holds us back over and over and over and over again in our lives in little ways. And then also in those big ways, because that is the thing. That is the last thing that I needed to move through. And I'm going to have to move through it again. Obviously fear of the next unknown. That's what I had to get through in order to say, okay, this is the decision that's going to change everything. Yes. And so I decided that, and I had this back and forth that I was doing in my business. I was like, I don't, I don't know if this is going to quote unquote work. What, what if this quote unquote works? What if I hire her, or I take this program, or I don't, and it doesn't quote unquote work. And it was like, I'm done with that question. Everything I do in 2020 works. Yes. That's right. Because I decided that it will. I, I just decided. And it, like I said, one decision can change everything. So I have had to make a lot of difficult decisions in the last four years to get to that point. Yes. I'm grateful that you did. I am too. My entire life has turned around in the last, I would say three, four months. In in my in my confidence, in my clarity, in my ha- in my happiness, and I didn't want to say happiness. I feel like happiness is so fleeting. Like I could be happy, but I have like deep seated joy. Yes, I said that yesterday. Come on, Amber. Yes, it's joy. It's that to the core of who I am. I am content because I know that life as it comes, it's going to come with its highs and its lows, and I'm here for all of it. I'm no longer hiding from the hard parts and living for the good parts. Yes. Yeah. It was it, it was a journey to get here, and like I said, if you're starting this journey, it's a long journey, and I have a lot longer to go, and I have so much more to learn, and though I am so grateful that I got to hear and I don't I don't look at it lightly I, I don't take it lightly uh, what I've done and what I've given up and um, everything I've sacrificed and, and had to do to get to here was worth was worth it yes Free your mind while it's time. What's up with that? I got one thing on my mind. What's up with that? Yo, that's Pharaoh Chibomba. Please make me die a thousand deaths in a day, and then I won't jump in the front while you're down for a long time. Put it down for a long time. Assalamu alaikum. Peace, shalom, shalom. Hotel, yeah, in my DT records. B and B production. Penis hot to top. Rhythmic sign. Love to rap. Yo, you check it out. Check it out. All your local neighborhood stories. Life is a journey, not a destination. There are no mistakes, just chances we've taken. Lay down your breaths, cause all we have is now. Wake up in the morning and get out of bed. Start making a mental list in my head. Thank you.
A Beautiful Day by India Irie saying live on Good Morning America. A News You Can Use podcast does not own any of the music played on any of the episodes of a News You Can Use podcast. We do have permissions from Tony Yoda Ballard, Common Folk, B&B Productions, and MIDT Records. Thank you. Okay, so I have another question for you. How how do you balance your work, um, your entrepreneurism, and, and your personal life as as a wife, and and just you know taking the time for yourself? So um, I love the word balance because it is it. My business, where it wasn't before, is now an extension of me. Yes, and so I. It's, it's almost hard to explain, but I have my to-do list like everyone does, and though I I utilize my time very differently now than I used to, mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. The other day, um, I came, the last week, I had a pretty nasty, like, head cold situation. Okay. And, and Thursday, I think it was Thursday, I was like, man, I just don't. I'm not feeling good and I had all of these calls and I had all this stuff to do and though I had a call that wanted to reschedule in the afternoon I had the pocket of time open up and instead of what I would have done before is I would have hustled or I would have sat behind my laptop and done a little bit more work or I would have done laundry or whatever I was like I'm gonna go down there's a new day spot down down in the plaza district I'm gonna pop in there it's like 50 bucks to go in and sit in there yeah and we go get I'm going to go get a juice. I'm going to go sit in the sauna. I, I'm going to go spend an hour where I wouldn't have before to spend it on myself. I'm going to take care of myself because that ultimately gives me access to to having more energy, to showing up at more genuinely with my husband, to showing up more genuinely online. And though I used to not do that because I didn't trust that what I the work that I had done before or up to that point was enough. Okay. So it was like it was never enough. So I was I was in this constant state. Uh, the first seven or eight months of 2019, I worked seven days a week. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, anywhere from eight to 12 hours a day. That's crazy. I was behind my laptop constantly. I missed events. I missed, I just, I worked. I worked 2019 away, 
because I didn't believe that what I was doing was enough. And so it was never enough. And so I had to keep doing more. Wow. I had to create more. I had to be more. I had to be everywhere in all the places. And, and I had people reaching out to me. They're like, how are you doing this? I was like, I can't. Like, the, the real honest answer is I literally am behind my laptop all day, every day. Golly. And, and I was like, I, so I quit my job. <laughs> so I didn't want to work for other people. And now I'm a slave to buying laptops. <laughs> I'm a slave to social media. I'm a slave to like, and it wasn't until I, I, I had to get to the point that I believed that what I was doing in my work, that I was showing up at my highest level. And only you can answer that question. Of course. Because if you're going to get on social media and you're going to jack around and you're not going to get anything done, you know that. <laughs> right. And it's like, you know what you're doing with your time. And so when you show up intentionally with the time that you have, it's so much easier to step away. For me, it felt like, of course I'm going to go take care of myself this afternoon. I don't feel well. I got really amazing work done this week. And, and it is what it is. And I'm at peace with that. And I trust that taking an hour and a half away from my laptop is not going to ruin my life. Or my business. Like, yes. Nothing's going to crumble around me <laughs> because mm-hmm. I, I'm not working. And so that goes the same. It goes the same with my husband. It goes the same with um, being intentional with moving my body. Um, I'm a yoga instructor as well as I, I practice yoga. And so um, I'm going to go to a power yoga class and I'm going to go like take care of my body and my mind because that gives me access to peace that I'm showing up at my highest level. Yes. I love yoga. Oh, yeah. It's, I, it, I honestly, I started practicing seriously in uh, April, and then I did a teacher training. <laughs> like, nice. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was the best thing I could have done for my for my practice, but also just my soul needed it. I need it. I love, I actually just talked to Kathy McKinnon earlier today. She's amazing. She's also a yoga teacher. We were uh, talking about how yoga um, has given us this access to like this two for one kind of thing. this like mindfulness practice. Yes. And a workout. And so like, I love sitting and meditating. And so I can sometimes use my yoga practice as a meditation. Nice. And I get a good workout and I meditate. So any time savers, like anyone who's like trying to save time out there, <laughs> go do yoga. And you'll meditate and you'll do yoga. You'll move your body and you'll get a meditation. <laughs> That's real talk. Yeah, it's different than any other form of exercise I've ever done before. Um, I used to sort of competitively, I lifted weights, like, you know, I've run, I've done, like, I've done all the things, and I've never found them to be so soothing for my soul as yoga is. Yeah, no, I, I have to agree with you on that one. Um, I, I ha- uh, moved back, moved back here, and I haven't, uh, actually found a class that I need to tap into, but that's something on my to-do list to to find some classes that I can I could take uh, weekly because um, I definitely was was doing that in St. Louis and um, it like you said it's a good cardio I, I get my heart rate up I sweat and but it's also a way to to be in a meditative state and and it always just made me feel so peaceful um, you know during and afterwards so it, it's definitely a good practice to to add to your life. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, I practice and teach. Uh, I teach Baptiste inspired uh, power yoga, and then I, I practice Baptiste uh, power yoga. And when I'm done with that class, I have pretty much stretched and strengthened every muscle in my body. I know and you so, are. Right? It's like I know I have heard it before that like yoga is not a good workout, and though I'm like. <laughs> Maybe there are some types of yoga that are not, like, if you do, like, yin yoga or something that's, like, restorative and really slow, like, you're not going to get your heart rate up the same way, but 
I do. I'm like, if I'm going to go to a power yoga class, I know I'm going to get a good workout in. I'm going to look that up. Yeah, uh, that piece, I would definitely check it out. I am so for it. I had done different kinds of power yoga before, but the sequence is just, it's so good. It's so good. You have stretched and strengthened everything in your body by the time <laughs> Nice. So Amber, yeah. I created this um, this interview um, series a few years ago. I was just kind of inspired. I kind of wanted to know. I wanted to get into the leaders' uh, heads, basically. And um, the name of it is called Black Influencers Values. And I'm going to ask you a series of questions and just you know, just give your honest answer. All right, that's what I'm here for. Okay, cool. So, first question is, describe yourself in three words. Energetic, evolving, and infinite. Okay. What was that fleeting moment in your life that catapulted you to your present self, but certainly could have really gone the other way? Um... It probably would have been September of the of 2019. I basically was at a like I was at a crossroad of like give up on everything that I was hoping and dreaming for in my life, or or really just go really choose to go a hundred thousand percent. In. Okay. And so for that, for a, do you want more details on what that yes. was? Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, essentially my business wasn't working, my marriage wasn't working, I was not working, um, and I was in one of the darkest, uh, I, 2018, I had three losses back to back, just in, in and around my family and, and friends, and, uh, you know, it was a really, really dark season, and so, it, it threw me into a downward spiral for the rest of the year. 2018, the year ended, and I was like, I'm done 2018. Like, let's move on. And even though, uh, even though I just dove headlong into 2019, I didn't take the time to really learn the lessons that had been handed to me. Okay. In 2018, I didn't take time to close the book and, and really assess my feelings and, and how I had been treating myself and how I've been treating others. And so I had to relearn a lot of those lessons in 2019. And I got to a breaking point. I said I had been working every day for all of 2019. And looking back, the reason why was because I didn't want to, I didn't want to face what was really right underneath. It was really right there, and it. I, I feel like it was all of those things that had been coming to a head for the last four years. Okay. It was like I was uncover. It was like I was uncovering things a little at a time, and I would get to something, and I would uncover, and I'd get to something, and I'd uncover a little more. But I finally like got to the big one, and it was like I didn't want to face. I didn't want to fully face myself. I wasn't ready to peel back that last layer and see what was underneath. Yes. I wasn't ready to peel it back and see who I really was because I was really afraid of what I was going to find. Um, and I got to the moment where it was like, either I keep going the way that I am and I dive headlong into this just <laughs> by September of 2019, I... I dive headlong into this downward spiral. Maybe I'll have like a quarter life crisis and just completely lose it. Or I'm going to sit down and I'm going to really figure out what I am and what I'm made of and who I really am. Mm -hmm. And and when I did that, um, I, I reached out. I got support. Um, I'm now working with my business coach, Shannon Rose. She's the most amazing thing ever. And what she had me do was our first week working together was for me to completely unplug from all social media, everything, and to completely take the week off. And <laughs> do nothing. I bet you that was hard. It was probably the most, it was the most difficult thing and the, the most rewarding thing I've done, I did in 2019. 
the whole purpose was for me to be me by myself in my life. And I was like, okay, well, I, and I told her, I said, I, I'm, I'm open to do anything at this point because I was in another place like I, like I had been when I first was newly married. It was like, I'm in this place where obviously there's something wrong and I'm willing I don't want to go into a downward spiral quarter life crisis or whatever. I was like, I don't want to do that. And though I know that I'm heading there pretty fast. So mm -hmm. I'm willing to do anything to turn this around. She's like, well, let's take the week off. Um, and that week was everything for me. I cried. I journaled. I went on hikes. I took bubble baths, I, I explored, I went thrift shopping, I did things just because I wanted to do them. And I hadn't done that in a lot. She told me, she was like, you need to do things for fun this week, just for just no re there has there's no reason for it. There's no like, this seems sensible. There doesn't have to be a sensibility to it. It just is for fun. And I literally sat down with a pen and paper, was like, how do I have fun? Mm. and I literally couldn't think of anything that was fun for me anymore. Mm. And I wept. I, I literally cried over this paper that was supposed to be fun, and I was just like, I don't even know how to have fun anymore. Mm, mm, mm. That's what I've become. I've become my laptop and working and hustling and grinding and gritting my teeth and just doing it because if I don't, like, I'm going to fall apart. And so learning that I could step back and I wasn't going to fall apart, but then tapping back in and, and going in and peeling back that last layer and really finding who I was transformed everything. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had to do some hard work, but, but it paid off. Yeah, and just like anything that we want, it's on the other side of making the, the difficult decision. We don't get to just get somewhere. Like, we don't, I mean, maybe some people have, like, some super luxurious life just handed to them. Um, and though even then, I would argue that there's just junk under the trunk. Like, there's junk in their trunk that they need to take care of, too. Sure. But, but everyone has their stuff and if we're not willing to look at it then what's the point of being here <laughs> that ain't no point what? <laughs> what's the point of you showing up so you're going to show up to your life and you're going to go to work and come home and be a mediocre wife and maybe have some kids and then retire and you know, do the empty nest thing with your husband that you've drifted apart from for all of these years and maybe travel, maybe you'll go somewhere and have some fancy tea, but like really at the end of it all, you never got to anything within yourself. What's the point of you living your life then? That's a sad existence. Yeah, just floating Floating through life, we've, we've just become numb and, and catatonic and, and passive to the human experience that we've been gifted. What are your morning and rich? Excuse me. What are your morning and nightly rituals? Um, so I actually get really bored of morning and evening routine. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anyone, I, I don't know if anyone knows about human design. Um, if you have, then awesome. If you haven't, you should definitely check it out. Um, in human design, I'm a generator, and I have a few open and uh, defined and undefined uh, centers. Anyways, I started planning my life more around who I actually was, um, and I, I used human design is so powerful. Um Huge shout out to Amy Alchurch for showing me some of the things that I already knew about myself to be true, but then I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. So routine for me is not something that I super love, and I knew that about myself, but um, 
through learning more about my human design, it was made apparent to me that routine is not, it's not really for me. So I have a morning and evening routine, like list of a bunch of things. And then I just pick a couple and I do those every day. Okay. So like, so it's like a pick three, like I pick three things. Mm -hmm. It's like do yoga, drink some tea and meditate. Okay. Uh, or read a book, read a personal development book and journal and, and sit somewhere beautiful and, and be meditative for five minutes or whatever it is. So I kind of filter through those. So something that I'm really loving right now, um, I am reading Journey to the Heart. Journey. And I've been reading that. Uh, Say it again. It's called Journey to the Heart. I can't remember who it's by. Journey... To the heart. Uh, what is her name? I'm going to Google it for fast break. It's an amazing book. It's by Melody Beattie. B-E-A-T-T-I-E. Thank you. Uh, it's a little, like, it's just a little prompting book of, of things to just ponder. Really. And it's so beautiful. Um, uh, and so I've been reading that in the morning and just kind of journaling and especially with the new year, um, resetting for the new year. <laughs> has been something that I've been working on, you know, like the things that I want to do this year and plan for the new year and journaling about what I want to create in the new year. And so that's been something I've really been loving, uh, spending my morning doing. And so, I know that the morning routine thing is so big in the entrepreneurial like world. And though I see so much pressure put on it that it's almost like if it doesn't like look a certain way, we put too much pressure on it to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I know for me that the more pressure I put on something, the more likely I'm going to have a lot of resistance to doing it be like, oh, it didn't look right this morning, and so it wasn't worth doing, or like, it's not going to look right because they don't have enough time, so I'm not going to do it at all. Mm -hmm. And and so just, just start. Like, for me, the morning routine is like just to start. Um, if journaling seems like you don't know where to start, it's like just open, just get a piece of paper and just write whatever is on your mind. It might, be, it might end up being a grocery list, or it might be like, my, I feel like my eyes are weird today or like, it, like it can just be whatever is coming up mm. and just begin, just begin. It's the same thing with our meditation practice. It's like, just start, set a timer for one minute and be quiet for a minute and just begin. And so for me, my morning routine is like kind of ever changing uh, just because I was getting really like, I was like, it has to look a certain way, it has to be a certain way. And then I was kind of getting bored with, like, the same thing. Like, I was like, meditate, journal, read a personal development book. And I was just kind of getting bored in that. And so I sw started switching it up. Um, my evening routine lately looks like um, reading a book and then listening to my affirmations and then going to sleep. Where do you listen to your affirmations? I use an app called the Think Up app. Think up. Yes. Um, I love it because you can record your own affirmations. So when you're listening to them, you are listening to your own voice saying it over you. Mm. And so I, I think that's so powerful because I'm not one who's going to go stand in a mirror and like say my affirmations to myself. And though for some people that works, but I like this because I can hear myself saying it. Oh, and I can just loop it over and over and over again. So I, I tend to, like, listen to it, like, right as I'm falling asleep. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. Sometimes I drink tea in the evening, and then I read a book, and then I listen to my affirmations. So that's pretty much it. Cool. Who should I interview next? Oh, that's, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> Everybody Shannon says Rose. Shannon Rose. I mean, if you're if you're gonna um, talk to someone who's really stepped the f up in 2019, 2000, heading into 2020, 
the girl's on fire. I mean, absolutely. I'm so thankful to be in her energy. Like, she's insane. Okay, you're going to have to connect me to her, please. I definitely will. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay, so who is your target audience and your self-proclaimed niche talents and our gifts? So that's a two-part question. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, I work right now uh, with women who are in the same situation as me. Um, I work with women who are about 25 to 35 who are just struggling with burnout and in chaos in their life, feeling overtaken by life. Um, and I, I help them reclaim their confidence and their clarity and their calm through to creating consistency, which gives them access to momentum. Because without without consistency, we never really get anywhere. If we start and stop, we never get the momentum underneath us to really get where we want to go. And so mm -hmm. creating consistency and then learning to take aligned action because not every action is going to be right. Especially as women, we get started on like, I, I feel like women, like we have all of the things to do. We have the homemaker responsibilities. We have the kids and we have like, we have all this stuff. And if you're an entrepreneur, it's like a whole other thing. And we just start doing stuff. We wake up, we hit the floor, we start just doing stuff, just do stuff. And then by the end of the day, we realize we really didn't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so doing things that are aligned with where you're truly trying to go takes some getting to and it takes some clarity and it takes some letting go of. And so I help women get to that so that they just create the life that they're truly craving. Nice. And then what was the second part of that question? What is your self-proclaimed niche, talents, and our gifts? I'm extremely intuitive. That's one of the, I, I, I almost call myself an intuitive life coach. Okay. Um, but holistic is a little more, um, it's kind of more understandable. I work with the mind, body, and soul, and that affects your relationships. It affects your business. It affects every part of you. So some of, I take a very holistic approach. Yeah. And no, I, I have a very intuitive approach to how I work with my clients. Because... I am just have always been very empathic and very sensing to like that thing that's right underneath the surface. Mm -hmm. Like you're not you're not quite willing to look at it, and you kind of know that it's there. And I'm typically able to call that up and out very just much on an intuitive reading of of my clients and where they are and. And then step them through how to handle it. And so I don't have, like, set programs that I, like, walk people through. Um, I have tons of tools, and I have tons of access to, to my worksheets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I only, give, I only give them to people when it's the next right thing for them to do. Because I know that when we get into a space of personal development, taking the next, like, but I want to, like, fix everything, overwhelm can cut it off at the knees. And so I have a very intuitive way of working with my clients, and I think that that's one of my strongest aspects. Yes. And, and also the fact that I've been there, and I've done the work, and I'm still leading myself powerfully. And as I lead myself, it gives me access to lead other women powerfully. Mm -hmm. Nice. What did the young you envision, see, think, or was told to make you impact people the way you do? I think that my parents really believed that I could do and be anything. Um... And they really kind of instilled that in me. And I don't know what happened. I, it's been years and years of experiences that have led me to the point that I'm at now. Yes. So I don't believe that there is one thing or one thing that someone said. And I, I had so many amazing mentors as a, as a young 
as a young girl and as a young woman that believed in me. Yes. And so many people who believed in me when I did believe in myself. And I, I see this in my coaching is like what I love more than anything to do for women is to hold space for them and believe in them until they can believe in themselves. And there's something powerful about having someone who sees you and who holds space for you until you can create that space for yourself. Yes. And I had that. Um, I had that growing up. I, I, I've had that in, in young adulthood. And, and now, um, working with incredible women, as well as working with a coach myself, and my husband, who, who believes in me every time, every day. And so I've had that, and I think that that has given me access to stay in it and stay on the journey, and that's what's gotten me here. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite book, song, and quote? Oof. Book, song, and quote. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh. One of my favorite book series is The King Killer Chronicles. This is not an entrepreneurial book at all. King Killer Chronicles. It, yes. But I'm just throwing this out there. There's only two written, and it's been 12 years since he wrote the last book. So I'm hoping that he finishes the series eventually, or I I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need to know what happens. So only start that series if you're ready to, to wait with the rest of the world. Uh, and then I love Journey to the Heart. If, 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 if you need something to like just be a pick-me-up, and there's... I've read so many books, but that one is just one of my favorites that I've, I've read, and I just absolutely love it. Um, it's the first two books. And then, song, right now, there is a song by Mariana Trench called Who Do You Love? And it is so beautiful. I've just, I've been listening to it a lot lately. So What's that, I that? couldn't pick up. Mariana Trench. I'm going to look it up. Uh, yeah, and I, I originally heard the song and I thought of it as like a breakup song. Okay. And then I heard it. I heard it with like New Year's not that long ago. And it was just speaking to, for me, I heard it as like a coming back to yourself um, and having left for too long because you didn't have your stuff together and you couldn't get your feet underneath you. And coming back because you chose to love yourself. Um, and it's just been my anthem recently. And so I flipping love it. And it's so beautiful. It's just such a beautiful song. And then my favorite quote, you know, really, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm really not one for quotes. And though um, I'm trying to remember... Uh, was it Theodore Roosevelt? What's the one in the arena? It's a very long quote. Mm-hmm. It's not a, it's like a, it's like a book at that point. Um, I believe it is. It's the in the arena quote. I have to look it up and I will read it to you. The man in the arena. Okay. And I think it was, it was Theodore Roosevelt. Nailed it. Uh, the man in the arena, uh, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of these could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best, knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst if he fails at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory 
nor defeat. And, and why and is that your favorite quote? Because of the journey I've been on. Um, because I have fallen short. And because I have been seen by others. I, I have been seen falling short by others. Mm-hmm. And though I got back up when they never got the arena in the first place. Hmm. And so it was it was hanging in my office for a long time and we're redoing the house and so I was like, I know that I have this quote and it was like it kind of became a part of the background. You know when you have something hanging up you never you actually stop reading it. Right. <laughs> and so I had to, I had to Google it. So I was like, There's no way I'm gonna remember I'm not gonna remember it uh, word for word, but I do remember that like it was powerful enough for me to print to have it print uh, printed out and put in my office. So um, yeah, I love that quote. Awesome. Name two things you want to tell the world. I believe that the elevation of the world starts with the elevation of you. Mm. And absolutely anything is possible when we create the space for it to be possible. Not just that anything is possible. You just have to believe in it or whatever other fairy tale BS there is. And it takes something to get to creating that space, but anything is possible when we make the space for it to be possible. When we make the space for us to take the steps to create what it is that we desire to create in the world. Yes. Are you a saver or a shopper? And what is your financial strategies? Uh, probably both. I like. <laughs> I'm a saver until like we need something, or until it's finally just like we need to replace something. Or I'm also a big marketplace fan. Like I don't know if anyone else uses the Facebook Marketplace, but I have flipped so much furniture from Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, I sold a lot. Of, I I sold my whole house on on Facebook. Yeah, like I, but the thing is, is I'll buy a piece of furniture knowing that I can fix it up and then sell it for more. Oh, nice. Okay. Because <laughs> I love, I love, like, I love, like, messing around with, like, staining and, like, repolling. Like, it's, like, if it's a simple project, I'm not going to go, like, refinishing entire pieces of the furniture uh, unless I'm going to keep it. But uh, I definitely, um, I go through bouts of both. Like if I'm saving for something, I'll be a saver. And though I just, I now believe that I used to struggle with money. I used to struggle so much with money, but money is an energetic currency and, and it's always coming my way. And, and I, I stopped, I stopped making it so damn hard. I put my money in this box and like, it just, it was very, money was very difficult for me for a long time. And now it just is, easy, it's a lot easier now that I trust and believe that I am okay no matter what my financial situation is. And though, like, the more I trust and believe that I'm okay, money comes to me with ease and I don't fight it so much anymore. Mm-hmm. And so what are my, what are my financial, like, strategies? Yes. I mean... I'm still a baby, um, so my husband and I are just getting that together, I think, now. Um, pay off your credit card debt, don't let that overtake you. One of my biggest strategies. Spend less each month on what I, like, my living, my base living expenses that I make. Um, and stay, we stay like crazy. Nice. So... I pay, I, I have a Roth IRA that I pay every single month. And every few months, I up how much I put in there. And so it just keeps kind of sitting there and making money for us, which is nice. And then, fingers crossed, uh, 2020 or 2021, we're going to be saving to buy some rental properties. So I, yes. I so believe in having, having rental properties. Um, and so I'm hoping to do that for the next year or so. I suggest you get a property manager. 
I just I just oh, yeah. my landlord uh, in St. Louis and 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 I hated it. So I, I just suggest. Oh yeah, there's no way. There's no way <laughs> I would do it. Property manager. Yeah, there's no way I would do it myself. Oh, absolutely not. No, no, no. I would not. I couldn't do it. I've always been an amazing. I've always been an amazing tenant, and though I know that there are so many not amazing tenants out there. Correct. <laughs> you you don't run into a few. Congratulations on that. That's that's exciting. Yeah. So I mean, I don't really have any like super mega strategies or like I can't break down numbers and stuff for you. I just very I'm nice. still very new. So I'm so new to all of this um, financial literacy and savings. I mean, saving for taxes is another one that like has saved our butts more than once. Of just we put aside money every single paycheck, no matter what it goes into a, it goes into an account and we did not look at it. We do not touch it until we pay our taxes that year. Okay. And more often than not, it's more than we need. And then we have a little like net thing to put somewhere else or to put into the, like whatever, but like for whatever reason, tax season comes around and so many people are like, mm, like, how am I going to pay my taxes? Right. And I just, I don't want to, I don't do that. That's more <laughs> because I'd rather know that the money's there. And then, you know, if there's extra things, great, we can go on a vacation or we can like go do something with that. But I'd rather not spend it throughout the year and then be screwed on tax day. Makes sense. Yeah. Does your key values and life mission speak first to your race and then the world, vice versa, or that is not a thought of yours as you live day to day? Okay, wait, repeat that. Does your key values and life missions speak first to your race and then the world, vice versa, or that is not a thought of yours as you live day to day? Oh, I guess probably not a lot of mine. So like, I'm not understanding what your question is. So like the color of my skin? Yes. Your race. No, I, it doesn't. Yeah, I I don't think about it. I don't think about it as a part of what I'm trying to create. Um, and so I, and it's not that like, I don't see and understand color and the difference between colors and races and the struggles that are within each and all of that good stuff that's in there. Race is not a part of what I'm talking about in the, in the world. And so it doesn't really come up in, for me, much in my core values and beliefs. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. When you have something that's super important to you, what do you tell yourself to get pumped? Um, when I have something that's super important to me, what do I tell myself to get pumped? Like, I guess if it's for if it's for business, and my business and working with my my clients, my, my women, I'm just gonna remind. I probably would just be reminding myself and I do this but before I go live or before I share something is that like every every part of my journey is worth sharing because it, it can help someone else in their journey and and that that quote of like the elevation of the world starts with the elevation of you mm-hmm. so like do the damn thing <laughs> nice. like, it's like, it's like it's like just do it just do it and show up for it um because you're on this journey, you chose to be here, and, like, you're elevating as you take those steps. And so, but if I'm already excited about something, I'm doing it. I'm already doing it. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Name five people that you know that embody instrumental traits children should emulate. That children should emulate? Uh-huh. Like, do these need to be famous people? I don't know if they could be. They could be people you know, people you don't know, famous, not famous, whatever. Um, yeah, my husband is the most patient human being in the history of the world. 
Uh, I know that because he's married to me. (laughs) (laughs) But he really is genuinely in the most, like, frustrating things. He is just so patient. And it's not that he doesn't ever get frustrated, but he just kind of sees things for what they are as they are and, like, allows them to be without trying to fix anything or, like, and that calm is so important in life. Mm -hmm. Um, um, My dad is able to pretty much create or fix anything. (laughs) Nice. And it's like he's able to just see something and, like, and, and... make something happen or create something like very physically like building or like building something or like recreating things and though it comes for what I see is like a sense of just like this can do this like that like I can figure it out um, and he has still that in me like everything is figure outable like we can figure it out um, and, and my mom my mom is my mom is MacGyver in female form. Like, <laughs> she'll look at, I swear, she'll look at something and she'll be like, oh, just like, use a toothpick and blah, 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 blah. And just like that. It'll like, take off. And it's like, what are you talking about? And it's like, oh yeah, that actually worked. So it's like, she, she also has this kind of like, figure outable, like, like, uh, just attitude about things. Like, nothing is really broken ever. <laughs> And mom can't fix it. <laughs> That's great. Um, gosh, dang, you said five. You got two more. You got two more. Got two more. Um, I wish I knew famous people. I really don't. I just kind of don't follow pop culture all that much. Um, Renee Brown. She is, if you haven't read any of her books, definitely do this. Okay. But she is so uh, willing to show up for the junk, willing to show up for the ugly parts of life that are, the, and I want to say ugly, but the hard parts of life. Okay. I kind of mentioned earlier that, like, I felt like in my life that I was, I was hiding from the, the hard parts and living for just the good parts. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of made all of it not really very that exciting uh, because there's no depth to my existence, really. And she just, she like exudes that just power of stepping fully into the unknown. And, and I love, I love all of her books. I've read like all of her books. She's amazing. Um, and then Melanie Ann Lair. I don't know if you have heard of her. She's mm-hmm. in the online space. You should definitely follow her because she believes in magic. Melanie and, and what was the last name? Lair, L-A-Y-E-R. Okay. She just is magic. It's like whatever she decides to create becomes like just amazing and it's incredible. And though she believes in magic so much that if you hang around her, like you start to believe in magic too. <laughs> I know people like that. Yeah, and it's like if I, I would want my kids to hang around her. Believe that like anything is possible because you can believe that it's possible. Um, and so she's amazing. Nice. Okay, uh, name five people that you know that are powerhouse powerhouses in their industries. Oh, well, Melanie Ann Lair, for sure. Um, Shannon Rose is incredibly powerful. Again, I will say, I've, I'm working with her right now. She's just absolutely amazing. Um, powerhouses in that industry. I mean, Gary V, the guy is absolutely everywhere, always insane. Uh, Billie Jean from Billie Jean is marketing. And in their industry. Oh, Baron Baptiste. Absolute powerhouse in his industry and really creating space for for really amazing things to be happening. 
happening in like the yoga in the yoga world and yoga community. Sweet. Do you have a website and and, and business name and our business name? How you spell that? S O U L J O U R N E R. Okay, cool. So you talked about being a life coach. Tell us how we can, um, how people can uh, get your services. Yeah. So connect with me on social media. I'm pretty much everywhere. Social media is Amber Lee and Drake. Uh, I think I'm the, I, I am the only, last I checked, only Amber Lee and Drake on Facebook. And how, how do you spell that, Amber? It's Amber, A-M-B-E-R, Leanne, L-E-A-N-N, Drake, D-R-A-K-E. And hop into my, into my group, the Soldier and Our Sisterhood. Spend some time in my energy, and, and I always do free clarity calls, and for me, what that looks like, I, I just basically hold space for you to explore the edges of yourself to see if coaching together would be a good fit for you. Uh, and though it's not a sales call, I know that a lot of people have clarity calls or whatever calls and it ends up being a sales pitch. <laughs> what it, For me, what it is, is holding space for you to allow magic to happen. And if that magic feels like something you want to do regularly, you want to create regularly together, then we can talk about working together. Okay. But it's just a space for you to come in and explore what being intuitively led and what it feels like to have someone have, have your back 100% and, and be in your corner and to hold space for you. And so I do that. There are free clarity calls. Um, and I love spending time with women in that space. And then my one-on-one coaching practice, you step into that. By we step into a clarity call together. If you're really interested in working with me, we can use that clarity call as just a, a really figuring out if it's a good fit for us. And then we work together. We make magic happen together. We, we create calm out of the chaos. And we, we ditch the burnout. We reclaim your confidence and your clarity and consistency. Yes. And they can reach you on your website? The best place to reach me is through Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Um, connect with me on Facebook or Instagram. Okay. And then where do you teach your classes, your yoga classes? I am here at New Angle Yoga. Um, I am just subbing there right now. So I'm not, I don't have a schedule that I'm there regularly. But I will be... In 2020, I haven't set everything up yet. I will be doing, like, virtual classes on mm. in my, uh, yeah, I will be offering them in my Soul Turner Sisterhood group. They will only be for the women in my group, and it'll be, like, you pay me via PayPal, or, and then it'll be on, like, Zoom, and we'll do a Zoom, like, class together. Now, that's hot. You know, that's hot. I love that, because uh, <laughs> you are all in my head, Amber. What's up with that? I wrote this down I'm so excited. to have, have something access like that. So you all in my head. I love the idea of it. And I, I actually got the idea because I applied for a, a website called Tribal Session. And they're like in beta testing. And so I haven't been like approved or whatever yet. And I don't know what that's going to look like. But essentially it's just um, health, professional, health professionals in like physical physical instructors, yoga, whatever, um, teachers to be able to teach virtually. Yeah. And I was like, I am going to do that. So I, I just haven't started offering it yet because the new year and um, my coaching practice has really picked up and I, I really want to, when I launch it, it be really powerfully done and not as a like, oh, I need to get this done. So it'll be sometime in the next few months I'm going to be working on that. That's hot. And then tell yeah, us. Yeah, I'm excited. You should be. Um, tell us uh, how we reach you on. So you said social media, Amber Leanne Drake. 
is that it? How do that's all the contact information? I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, connect with me on on Facebook uh, and send me a message, or uh, you can email me at amberleandrake at gmail dot com. Awesome. Yeah, I I am in that inbox more than I'm in my like professional inbox. So if you want to connect with me, that would be where where to hit me up. Um, yeah, connect with me there. Uh, get into my get into my uh, soldier and our sisterhood group, and connect with me on Facebook and Instagram, and get into my DMs, message me, and we'll we'll connect there. Awesome, Amber. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. Um, it's been a real honor and a pleasure to speak with you. Um, got you did you share a lot of nuggets. Any any last parting words to the uh, news and use po- podcast audience? Yeah, this, if you're able to get present with your life the way that it is, as it is right now, that presence will give you access to really creating the life that you're craving. Instead of trying to run ahead and getting anxious about the future or or living in the shame and guilt of not enoughness of the past or the BS of the past, we can't change anything that happens, but we can change how we react to what happens to us. We can't change the things that come at us, but we do get to choose how we react to them. And the only way to really be in that powerfully is to be present to what's happening here and now. I say. Thank you so much, Amber. Uh, it's it's really been a great time we've had today. I'm excited. Um, this is the first, like I said, the first episode of the year, and um, it's going to be a good one. I'm going to publish it third Sunday of this month, round three. And uh, I really appreciate you. And um, oh, guys, tune in to, uh, to the Soul Journal podcast because I'll be on her show. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said thank you. You're welcome. So it's been a great time to to get today, and I can't wait to uh, to um, show up on your your show. So uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Yes, absolutely. All right, we'll talk soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Check this out. Yo, 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 yo. the beat is popping. And welcome back to the News You Can Use podcast. Did you know that your support keeps this podcast alive keep episodes getting recorded new content created researched just gives me the power and the energy to continue to create more news you can use time that i the the hours per episode and per marketing sessions that i spend Creating this for you takes away from me uh, participating in any other income driven activities. So your support is needed to sustain future episodes of the News You Can Use podcast and also for leveling up because I want to make this better for you. I have a logo getting worked up for you and connecting with other vendors so that we can 
we can really just be set up just like the when I talk about sponsorship, we can set up just like the radio stations do. The radio stations come and they show up. They set up a whole music DJ, have a DJ to attract business to your your um to drive clients and customers to your store your, or your physical location. And that's the whole point of the News You Can Use podcast. And so your support is need, needed. You can contribute monthly um, by clicking the support this podcast button on the Anchor app. When you give nine ninety nine monthly, I get as the creator get thirteen percent more per dollar. So I'm really grateful for you and continue to give and and show your support and love. Thank you. Engage. Let's connect. Ujama Cooperative Economics. Remember to support. To, remember to support this podcast with a small contribution to help sustain future episodes. Remember to support this. Co- Excuse me. Remember to support this podcast with a small contribution. To help sustain future episodes, it takes a lot of time and energy to research and create each episode. When you give directly, it's the cash app. Our name is dollar sign B and us LLC. The dollar sign B E. A N D U S L L C and through PayPal at our website paypal.me.org. That's P A Y P A L dot M E slash Frontier F R E M C H A I R E. We give $9.99 monthly through the free Anchor app. I get 13% more per dollar. You may support this podcast directly through the cash app, dollar sign B and us LLC, or paypal.me slash friendship. Your giving and support is greatly appreciated. Do message us on the B and us LLC page and Instagram pages. Your events across the diaspora. Message us your events from across the diaspora. And topic ideas. What news can you use? It's been real, y'all. Thank you again. Much love and abundance. Thank you. My name again is Friend Share. Thank you to everyone who downloaded the podcast and contributed to these last two episodes. Our sponsors, the Black Speculative Arts Movement and the local artist street of St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who purchased from the BNS LLC market. Your pictures will be uploaded. Stay tuned. For the preceding article about the Black Speculative Art Movement. Correction from episode three. I am not an expat of Dallas, Texas. That's my hometown, y'all. And I love the big D. Go Dallas Cowboys! Cowboys Nation! Just subscribe, write reviews. And rank the news of the youth podcast on your favorite po- listening on your favorite podcast platform. Thank you so much to the Anchor, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Breaker, Podbean, Radio Public, Overcast for allowing us. 
to have faith on your podcast platform. If you don't see your favorite podcast platform on the Anchor app, request your favorite podcast listening platform on the Anchor app. Do leave us voice messages on the Anchor app. I'm waiting for our first message, waiting for our first sale on amberbookstores.com. It's full of this, this, this month. February 26, 2019. It's been very beautiful and, and we're very grateful for all of you and the almost 200 plays of the News You News podcast. We're signing out. Peace, love, much love and abundance. This is the live version of Bob Marley and the Wellers burning and looting from the uh, from YouTube. Mariana Trench, who do you love? Sleeplessness, I don't know why. Just can't get away from myself. When I get back on my feet, I'll blow this open wide and carry me home in good health. God, it's been so long, what a week that I feel like someone else. I miss the way that you saw me, or maybe the way I saw myself. But I came back till you broken, and I've been away too long. I hear the words are spoken, and everything comes out wrong. I just can't get this together, can't get away. I don't know why, just can't get